Hey guys, welcome back. So I've got this sitting around on the shelf. It's a um, old turbo made in Chinois. And uh, once again, being in uh, COVID lockdown, I wasn't sure what to do. And uh, yeah, I've decided I might turn it into a uh, gas turbine engine for something different. I mean, we're in COVID lockdown. What would be better than playing with your own jet engine? So I think today I'm going to build a jet engine. Let's go. Okay, so essentially what we need to do is create a combustion chamber. And to do that, I'll bring you guys down a bit. There we go. So we're going to create a chamber like this. And it will have two little rings at either end or flanges that will be welded into Inside that, we'll have a flame tube, which goes like this, and they will have a series of holes that change the amount of air that goes into this flame tube to um, support combustion. On the end, I'll create a f end cap, and then I'll have another flange here where the flame tube will go into an extension on the combustion chamber. And I'll turn you guys around a little bit. And that will go like that. And hopefully I can taper it down into a something that resembles this. <clears throat> and then on top of that, we're going to have our funky little turbo. Um, drawing that a bit wrong. But anyway... So that's the compressor, that's our exhaust, that should be over here, down on there like that. Okay, <clears throat> and then it comes out the back. So essentially in a normal jet engine, you'd have little combustion chambers surrounding the, um, in between the, the compressor and the turbine. Um, we're using an automotive turbo to represent what a purpose-built gas turbine would be. So realistically it's not it's fit for purpose but it's not designed in the application it was designed for so we end up making this or creating this huge big combustion chamber so the idea is is that the compressor housing which is around here will come down and feed into our combustion chamber with air pressure once the air pressure is in here it will force its way into the holes cause combustion the expanding gases will rush down the chamber and then that will hit the turbine that will spool up the turbo start the cycle until it's self-sustaining and basically you end up with a turbo which is more or less like a gas turbine but you would certainly not be able to fix it on the side of a wing of an aircraft because it's just way too heavy and bulky but for having fun it meets the tick so that's what I'm going to do in a nutshell. I'm going to try and create this and uh, let's get back into it. What I have here is the exhaust of my combustion chamber and I've created a taper and the taper was pretty easy to do. It started off as a one piece pipe and I then turned around and divided it into four, which you can see through here. There's four cuts. And then what I did is I created a V 
and by creating a V it allowed me to then turn around once I put these little slots in here it allowed me to use a decent shifter to put some leverage on there and get it to collapse on itself the idea behind this is to create a um, nice transition which I think we will create that that looks pretty good to me and I'm not going to muck around with it any further um, this will allow the gases to transition from this size pipe into a smaller pipe and it will also mean that the gases as well as being um, expanding from the combustion chamber it will also be increasing its speed because it's reducing in diameter and um, in the back of my head I was sort of um, wondering what size to go down to and I thought well I'll stick with about three inch um, as you know three inch seems to be allow for a decent flow without choking it but we'll find the out. dimensions there is a calculator that, you, that gives you the dimensions you turn around and you put everything in I'll show you that all later and it, it suggested slightly smaller and everything but I just didn't have that pipe size so I went bigger and the rule of thumb from what my research shows is that your combustion chamber it doesn't hurt to go bigger but they certainly won't run properly if you go too small. You end up with too much of the combustion occurring further out of the combustion chamber and then the turbo ends up running hot and the wheels fall off or just melt the tips off the um, exhaust side of the turbine. So for the minute, I'm just going to get back into it and stitch weld it all together and hopefully I end up with a piece. Okay, so I'm just going to give a quick little explanation of the flame tube. So it's basically a tube like this. And I suppose front on our profile is like that. So the idea is that you divide your flame tube into three areas. So you have your primary, which is your first stage. Um, secondary, obviously second stage and tertiary which is your third stage and each stage is changing in the volume of air and the size of the holes and the amount of holes and basically um, on a tertiary I will probably end up doing uh, something like that secondary will just be a series of holes and then um, in the primary will be a series of smaller holes um, essentially what will happen is you'll have a means of supplying fuel into this chamber and then from your combustion chamber all the boost pressure and air pressure around it will force their way into this flame tube here where it will ignite with the fuel and you will end up having a flame. Now the idea I'm going to do is instead of drilling the holes straight through which many people do I have or will turn around and offset my um, drill piece in the uh, milling machine and come in from the center line, if that was the center, I'd be coming in over here like this. And the idea is, is that if each hole is drilled in the corresponding way, what I've created is a swirl. And the idea of the swirl is that basically any fuel, um, eventually I'd like to get it on um, liquid fuel any fuel that sort of 
gets into the um, flame tube um, has a better chance of atomizing and mixing with the f turbulence of the airflow and um, hopefully you get better combustion. I'm only going to do that on the first stage, the primary stage. The second stage can just be bang straight in, same with the third. So that's the idea of the flame tube and that sits inside the combustion chamber and it's located in place by a locating ring. Um, and yeah, that's the idea behind that. I've made a mistake with the combustion chamber. I'm on the final step of assembly with this and I drilled my hole, which you can see here. And then when I fitted the flame tube, I noticed a problem. So I'm gonna show you guys what I think is a problem. It might essentially be a problem with yours if you build it, but I think it might be a problem with mine. So I've decided to shift the hole further down in the combustion chamber and um, I'll show you the reason why. So here's our combustion chamber and I've already installed the flame tube. Now these holes here, they're on an offset at angle to try and create an even pressure of swirl inside the flame tube. Um, so I suppose if you turn around and look through here, I've still got to clean everything up, but the idea is that basically we will create a swirl in here and the gases will burn further down that flame tube. Now. When I drilled the hole originally here, you can see it's bias, it's uncovered a certain portion of um, of these holes which are in the primary section. And what I'm concerned about is that basically there'll be uneven flow on this side of the flame tube. So what I decided to do is I've moved it further down and I'm using this locating ring that I made on the... Um, I suppose the end of the combustion chamber as a diffuser so the air can come in and then wrap around and we get a stable obviously we will have a stable pressure because pressure is universal across the whole range but basically what I want to do is even the flow through the combustion chamber so that when it enters into the flame tube it's even so I've decided I'm going to have to plug that weld up and I'm going to then turn around and have the um, inlet for the air pressure here. So yeah, so hopefully you guys won't make a similar mistake, but if you do, it probably warrants um, to get, take the flame tube out and put it next to your combustion chamber and see where everything sits between your primary, your secondary and your tertiary. And then that way you can sort of eyeball exactly where you need to feed your air in. Um, but yeah, that was something that I made, a bit of a mistake and oversight, but I think we'd get around it doing it this way. Alright guys, so there's our blueprint. Um, like all blueprints, should be done on the workbench. If you're a draftsman, you do it on a piece of paper, and obviously a draftsman doesn't build anything. So yeah, so essentially I've put them in the corresponding spots. So we've got our flame tube here. Um, previously I may have called it a combustion chamber, but I was essentially talking about the whole thing. There's our combustion chamber. That is our extension of the combustion chamber flame tube that goes up to our turbo and it fits in the corresponding places and there's our end cap. So as I was saying before, this is our flame tube and you can see how the holes, you can see directly through that from your point of view, but you can't see this one completely clear. And you won't see this one because each one is drilled, as I said, on an angle to create some swell. So then we have our primary section, secondary and tertiary. And the idea is in each, as the flame is passing and burning and combusting, it's getting introduced to more oxygen and air. And that will hopefully complete the combustion process, which will give us an expanding gas and make everything spool up. This is our combustion chamber. 
The difference in size is so that the air surrounding it is acting like a plemium, which like a um, like a vehicle, a car on boost, we have um, excess air pressure that's around there that gives the combustion chamber its support. And then we created the taper into the, basically the turbo flange, which we've machined up. And uh, I think the only thing left to do is to mount it all together and see what it looks like. So we've finished the first stage of the build. Basically there's a combustion chamber, extension, turbo sitting on there, then the air comes in through our boost pipe, charges the whole combustion chamber and the, so the cycle starts or finishes, depends on which way you look at it, it starts, it's, it's yeah. I've decided to leave that hole open, I'm going to tap it, um, put a quarter, quarter inch BSPT thread in there and then I'm going to run a um, gauge to measure the boost pressure or plemium pressure or chamber pressure whichever you want to call it I'm happy with the way the feed is off the turbo um, yeah essentially I think everything is good to go so this is how our turbo looks and you can see how the taper and everything corresponds if at a later stage we fit a larger turbo or find that this is restricting it somewhat we can cut further up here and add another piece in that's no big deal but yeah i think um i think everyone should have a go at building one of these it should be fun i think that this thing looks absolutely awesome um all the fabricating is done i'm very happy with how it's all come together uh, calculation wise it looks like it's going to work on paper hopefully we'll find out when we get to doing our fuel system and our lubricating system um, which that will be in the next part of part two and then hopefully we get to turn around and kick it in the guts and fire it up and listen to all those awesome noises that only a gas turbine can make. So if you enjoyed it, give it the thumbs up. If you've got any comments or advice, please leave them below. And by all means, share around to your friends and let everyone know about Shed Talk. Alright guys, till next time, take care, thank you and goodbye. <laughs>